In this video, I'm going to show you how to schedule a Cisco WebEx meeting. All right, let's jump right into this. Now, first things first, is if you already have an enterprise licensed version of Cisco WebEx meetings, I actually recommend you consult with your organization so that you can follow their guidelines and best practices for scheduling. In this tutorial, I will be using the free version, and that will cover from the free version through some of the licensed versions as well in regards to scheduling your meeting. Now, the first step you're going to want to take is to actually create an account and then download the Cisco WebEx Meetings desktop app. Once you've done so, just go ahead and open it up. At the top, we have two main tabs, Start a Meeting and Schedule. The first thing you're going to want to do is click Schedule. This will actually open up your Cisco WebEx Meetings website that is hosting your service. And before we get into any scheduling, I recommend we click on Preferences. And then we click on Scheduling. Now, in the middle, there's an option for email invitation. You want to go ahead and checkbox, send a copy of the email invitation to me. We'll get to why in just a moment. Go ahead and click Save. And now we're going to want to press Home. Home will bring you to the home page for the hosted site, and you'll have the same two tabs that you had in the desktop app. You'll start a meeting and schedule. I do recommend next to start a meeting, you go ahead and hit the little arrow. Make sure that use desktop app is checked. That will drive full functionality and allow the meeting to be hosted or supported locally instead of with a web browser much better performance enabling that. So then we're gonna go ahead and click schedule. Now in this tutorial, I'll be covering how to schedule a standard meeting. There is also another type of meeting called a personal row meeting, and we'll review that in a future video. So when we click on schedule a meeting, it opens up a quick dialog box. It's pretty much your meeting header. Under meeting type, with the free version, there's only two options. I always recommend sticking with the original selection, which is WebEx Meetings Pro 3, free 50 in this case. If you have a licensed version, that nomenclature may change. You will notice there's an end-to-end -end encryption option as well. That's pretty much to have an encrypted secure meeting that strips most of the functionality out of the meeting and just gives us a secure portal for communication. However, with the standard option, you get the full options within the meeting in addition to having a secure meeting it's just simply not encrypted so always stick with the default there meeting topic is actually your meeting subject so you can just put whatever you want for your meeting title meeting password you tend to not need to change it's there for users that don't identify themselves or if you pre-designate with a licensed version that the meeting password is required to join by phone or by non-account holders. Most people are going to have some basic level of account and they will be able to identify themselves. Even if they proceed with guest mode, they'll be able to identify themselves with a name and email address, preventing the need for the password unless you choose it's required. So in this case, I will just go ahead and leave it. Next, you have the date and time that you want the meeting to occur. If you hover your mouse over the current date and time displayed, it will highlight blue and you can actually click it. We can then choose any random date here. Um, duration of the meeting, you are limited with the free version to 50 minutes. However, if you do have a licensed version, you can proceed with longer meetings. If you do need longer, you obviously need to address your account and look at upgrading. We'll go ahead and hit done once we selected the date and time. You can also change your time zone, but by default, it's going to pull the local one of the computer you're scheduling on. If you do need a reoccurrence, go ahead and click next to reoccurrence, and then you can actually set your reoccurrence pattern. So you can have the same day once a week. You could have it Monday, Wednesday, Friday every week, every day, every week. And then you can actually set an end date to the reoccurrence or select no end date. Um, standard reoccurrence. Attendees, I'm actually going to leave this blank. If you remember at the beginning of the video, 
I recommended selecting send a copy of the meeting invitation to me. So there's no need to place an address here. You will receive it in your mail of choice. That will be the same email address that you've used to create the account. And then we'll actually send the meeting invitation from there. Next, you can click show advanced options and start to go through them. For example, audio connection options. These obviously increase with the licensing. So we're at the free standard version. As we progressed up and licensed the account, we would gain more options here. So with the free version, we only have VoIP, which is voice over IP or using computer sound, if you will, so that you can use a headset or built in mic speakers. If you do need the call me or I will call in function, you will need to get the licensed version to do so. Agenda allows you to fill in a meeting agenda. You can itemize what that would be for the meeting or you can leave it blank. If you go through scheduling options, this is where I was mentioning the password function, you can choose that attendees have to have an account on the site to join. If you have the free version, I recommend that you don't check that. It's very rare that they'll be on the same site or hosting site as you with the free version. So just go ahead and leave that unchecked. Exclude password. Like I said, it's rarely used for most meetings unless you specify you want it to be used. So some people will just exclude it altogether. I always say it doesn't hurt to have it there in the event that someone needs it for a call-in user. Join before host. You can select the time that attendees can join the meeting and wait in like a virtual lobby prior to your arrival or the start time. So you can usually designate 5, 10, or 15 minutes. Most people stick with the standard of 5. So if the meeting's at 2 p.m., they can join at 1.55 p.m. It's always nice. It gives them the option to join a little earlier and make sure they have their audio and video settings good to go. Registration. You can, with certain versions of WebEx, you can require an attendance or an attendee registration, meaning they actually have to fill in preset information and sign up for the meeting or acknowledge that they will be attending. And with the licensed versions, you can actually set what that information is. So for example, name, company, email address, stuff like that. Um, but again, with the free version, we're just gonna leave it on none. We just want them to join. Email reminder, how soon before the meeting start time does the attendee get a reminder or an email that, hey, this meeting's coming up. Again, you can set that as you see fit from zero all the way to 50 minutes. That obviously will change again with licensing, but with the free version, it's up to the length of the meeting. Meeting options, you can click on that. It'll open up a secondary box and it selects the options that you want participants to have when the meeting begins. So the basics, I just leave the defaults, which are chat, they can turn on their video, um, notes, they can actually open a note box in their meeting window and take notes. And then you can, if you so choose, enable closed captioning. Just be aware that's not active. It is intended to be used with a transcriptionist or someone that will actually translate the closed captioning for you as the meeting's going on. I generally leave that off, press OK to lock those in, and then the attendee privileges, what can they do when the meeting begins? So annotate, that doesn't hurt, it means if you're collaborating with them, sharing a documentation, they can actually annotate or draw over or participate in the content with you. Uh, they can view the thumbnails of the other participants, view any document and view any page. So I pretty much give them full capability. I, as the host, will oversee it anyway. Go ahead and press OK after selecting that. And once you've done with that, you can say this is going to be a frequent meeting template for me. I'm going to use this for all my meetings. So you can actually save it as a template if you choose. Otherwise, just go ahead and press schedule. Once we hit schedule as the host, it will bring it into our meetings list. In this case, I've labeled it test. And it will present the option to actually copy the meeting, edit the meeting, cancel or delete the meeting and then I can add it to my calendar. But if you remember at the beginning of the meeting, I had you select send an invitation. So if we actually open up my email box, I will actually have two. And this is because I as the host scheduled it. So I will have one that is for me. 
And if I open it up, it, it'll say that you are the host. So I know this one's just for me. You don't want to be sending this to other individuals, but it'll also give the option to get the host information. It will also have the meeting invite and allows you to start the meeting. A host will always start or an alternate host. An attendee will always join. Uh, the other one that we saw, it actually says to forward to others. This is how I like to do it myself is I get these. And then once I have this meeting, I can accept it and it will go to my calendar for me. In this case, I'm using a Google calendar with this particular version. I can also from here forward this invite. So it even tells me you can forward this. There's no host information. So there's no security violations involved. I can go ahead and forward it like a standard email address. And what that does is it lets you use your existing address book for your email client of choice. So in this case, Google, if I had an address book, I could go ahead and forward this and then I could quickly reference everybody I want to invite. Super convenient and easy to use. If I need to change the meeting, however, if I need to, let's say, cancel it or change the time or date, I will need to return back to my hosting site. Does not hurt at all to go ahead and save this as a bookmark. But again, if you accidentally close this, forgot what it was, especially with the free version, you can always open up that meetings app and it will allow you to press schedule and bring you back to that website. As the meeting approaches, it will actually fill in the upcoming meetings in this desktop app and give you the option to start or join them right from this app on your desktop. Super cool and convenient. Again, to access that page, we just click schedule. It'll bring back the hosting page and it will allow us to schedule a new one or we can click on meetings on the left and it will show up all the upcoming, give us the option to view the past. And there's our test meeting. If we said, no, this isn't going to work. I can go ahead and cancel it. It'll ask me, do you want to cancel this meeting? Yes. It will cancel it, clear it out. And then it will actually send me another email notifying me that I did indeed cancel it. So guess what guys, in terms of scheduling a WebEx meeting, it is literally that easy. Just follow those guidelines and steps. Again, this covers the free version all the way through some of the licensed versions of Cisco WebEx meetings. Again, if you have the enterprise version, please check with your organization on their guidelines for scheduling. But that pretty much does it for this one. We will cover the personal room meetings, which are very similar in a future video. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you like this type of content in general, please consider subscribing and we will see you in the next one.